Hello, and thank you for joining me for this webinar on School Counseling Program Assessment in Comprehensive School Counseling Programs. A little bit about me, I think most of you already know if you've been with me through these webinars and made it to this point, but I am Sarah Kirk and I am the School Counselor Specialist at the Oklahoma State Department of Education. I work in the Student Support Division and we support our schools, our families, and of course, our students. So today's presentation, we're going to be talking about the School Counseling Program Assessment, how it fits into the Ask a National Model, what it is, what the template looks like, and then we'll summarize. If you've joined me on quite a few of these webinars, I think you're going to find this as one of the easier ones to digest. So sit back, enjoy, and I think that this one will be quick and easy. Of course, nothing about comprehensive school counseling is super quick and easy, but we want to keep in mind that each step better serves our students. We're not striving for perfection right away. We're just striving to continuously improve and build better supports for our students. So let's dive into the school counseling program assessment. Of course, we know that the Ask a National model is an outline of how to create a counseling program that has a positive impact on student achievement, attendance, and discipline. When we have comprehensive school counseling programs, we know that our decisions are data informed. We're delivering all services to all students. And we are closing achievement and opportunity gaps through interventions, supports, curriculums, all of that. And the results is that improves student achievement, attendance, and discipline. We do this through the four components, define, manage, deliver, and assess. You'll see those there in our square. And we have made it to the assess component. Yay, cheers all around. The assess component is the last of the four components. And of course, this is when we assess our school counseling programs. You'll see today we're talking about one component of assess, which is the school counseling program assessment highlighted there in orange. So let's talk a little bit about the assess component. The assess component is broken up into two parts, the program assessment, where we're assessing our overall school counseling program, and this also school counselor assessment and appraisal, where we're assessing the individual school counselor and their skills, competencies, and standards. So we break it up into two parts to better understand how we assess school counseling as a whole, both the program and the individual. Today's part about the school counseling program assessment obviously falls under the program. So we're not quite looking at the individual school counselor quite yet. This is just the school counseling program as a whole. So if you work with more than one school counselor, you might do the program assessment together because you're assessing the whole program. Of course, there might be components of it that are a little individualized. We'll talk about that as we go. So let's dive into what it is that the school counseling program ass assessment is. <clears throat> It is multifaceted and designed with continuous assessment and improvement in mind. So keep that at the forefront of your mind because this is not meant to be a tool that makes you feel bad about your program. It's not meant to be a tool that is overwhelming. It's just a tool to help you keep continuous assessment and improvement in mind. So we want to regularly assess our program to look at the design and the delivery of our program, and then also how we are assessing the impact on our students, okay? So when we look at our school counseling program assessment, we'll see that it's set up to look at how we are, what our progress is towards implementation of a full comprehensive school counseling program. It helps us identify our strengths and our areas for improvement, and it breaks each component of the national model up into parts so we can see where we're really doing well and where we need to focus. Of course, the primary focus for this is just to guide our future 
actions. It's to guide what we need to work on, what areas we need to improve of our school counseling program to, of course, result in better outcomes for our students. Typically, this is done once a year at the end of the year, but I've also heard of school counselors using this and continuously updating it as you implement more pieces of the national model. So whatever works well for you. Of course, we don't want to use it as a tool that's stress inducing or overwhelming. So I don't want you setting this like on your desk and feeling like you have to mark something off every day because that's not true comprehensive school counseling. We would rather implement the elements slowly, but really well than just do it like a checklist. It's not meant to be done that way. So really just looking at it, maybe if you don't like annually, if that's not often enough, maybe once each semester or quarterly and seeing where you are, but most of the elements won't change real dramatically in a short period of time. All right, so after we complete the assessment, we analyze our responses, as we said, to determine our strengths, our areas for improvement, and then make those goals, those long and short term plans for improvement. So when you look at the results, you might see that your deliver component is really strong. You're delivering really good direct and indirect student services, but your assess is not so strong. We're not assessing appropriately. Then you want to make, you might make a short-term plan to utilize the small group results report in the next six weeks or something, but then you might like long range plans as well. So maybe plans that within the next year you hope to be implementing another component. Okay, so we make those short term and long term goals based off of the responses from the school counseling program assessment. And of course, that's how we continue to grow and strengthen our program. We also want to notice that program implementation trends over time. So we want to see that, like I said, this doesn't change real often. It's not meant to, but we should see our program continuously improving. All right, so let's take a look at it. As with all the other templates, the School Counseling Program Assessment Template can be found on ASCA's website. Just go to um, if you just Google American School Counselor Association templates, it will take you straight there. However, I'm also, hello, going to pull up a version of it. So this version I'm going to share is part of Oklahoma's comprehensive school counseling framework. So it might look just a little bit different. It's just, um, with our logos and things, but it's the exact same content. So if you're in Oklahoma, you can use this one that is marketed to look like all of our Oklahoma documents, or you can use the one on ASCA's website. They are identical, just look a little bit different. So you can see here on the school counseling program assessment, down the, this first column is just each of the components of the national model. So if you've been following along with these webinars, None of this is new to you, okay? You know all of these things. It starts with the manage component. It doesn't start with the define component because there aren't actionable items in define. Remember, define is just those student standards, our professional standards, and our ethical standards. So those are interwoven into all of these other pieces, but we don't actually do them. They're, they're a part of everything. That makes sense. So, but we do write a vision statement and a mission statement and that sort of thing. So these are more tangible items. And so what you'll do to assess your school counseling program is just go through. And if it's complete, you just check it. And then if you have comments about it, like maybe you want to just copy and paste your vision statement into this box, you could. Um, or if you wanted to say maybe it's not complete. So you would uncheck it, but you would write in here, um, first draft of vision statement complete, working on the second draft or something like that. You could do that, okay? 
So you can see there how easy that is to just include your comments and check mark as things are complete. You'll, as we scroll, you'll see vision statement, mission statement, data. So making sure we're using our data. If we are, we can check there and then we can type in what it is that we're doing with that data. If we have annual student outcome goals, we can check um, the ones that we're doing. If we use the use of time calculator at least twice per year, then you could check that and put information in here. Use of time collected in October and April, something like that, okay? Your annual administrative conference, if you've done that, you can check there and make comments about it, an advisory council, the action plans, both the closing the gap and the classroom and group action plans, lesson plans, calendars, our annual and our weekly calendar. Um, then we get to the deliver component, okay? So all of that was managed. Then we get to deliver, which is of course those direct and indirect student services. So you can check here if you're doing classroom lessons and large group activities, check here if you're doing small groups. And then with in, indirect, you know, of course that's consultation, collaboration and referrals, but we wanna make sure we're reflecting that in our calendars as well. So make sure you're including that there to identify that you are doing that. And then we get to assess. So again, you'll just look through and see, if, am I doing the classroom and group results reports? Okay, check. If, am I doing the closing the gap results report? Professional standards and competencies assessment, school counseling program assessment. Well, that's this. So we'll, we could definitely say we're doing that because we're doing it right now. And school counseling performance appraisal, and then our program results sharing those results is an important piece of assess as well. So you can see here how pretty easily you could go through here and see where your strengths and your areas of improvement are just based off of what you've checked and what you haven't. Okay, and this is a really basic tool. Like I said, this is a pretty easy one. It's just a checklist. So it's nothing too overwhelming or too scary, I don't think, for most of us. And so um, it's a great way to take a look at your school counseling program, assess where you are, and then help you get to where you want to be. Let's jump back over to our slide deck. All right, so let's just quickly summarize what we've talked about today. As we mentioned, we wanna complete the school counseling program assessment at least yearly, usually at the end of the year, analyze for strengths and areas of improvement, and then make our short and long range plans for continued improvement, okay? Pretty easy tool. Usually this program assessment is just for our knowledge, but you can share it with your um, administrators, your evaluators, your district leaders, that sort of thing, so they can see where you stand. It's a good advocacy tool if you wanted to use it that way. More often than not, the school counselor professional standards and competencies assessment or that school counselor performance appraisal, those are used more often with our administrators and our evaluators. But this is another one you could use to show a quick snapshot of where your comprehensive school counseling program is and where you want to go. I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that this, like I said, was an easier one to understand and to put into action. I think often people don't use this tool because they don't realize just how easy and helpful it can be. So I encourage you to check it out. And of course, as always, we want to do what's best for kids, which is looking at our school counseling programs and seeing what we're doing well and seeing where our improvements are needed and continuing to work towards that comprehensive school counseling program that serves all students. If I can help in any way, please reach out. My email address and my phone number are there. As always, thank you for the work you do in our schools to serve our students. I will see you again soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.